Um, can we go over the different characteristics of early propulsion, mid propulsion, late propulsion? Am I correct in thinking? We can, but you're going to have to give me a context because it could be different. So if we're going forwards or if we're going backwards, it would be different. Right? Um, which one do you think would be easier to understand off the bat? It's it's really easier. Easier. It's just what it is. Let's go forwards. So just so, so th think about, about placement versus pushing against the ground. Like where? So, so, so if my foot is off the ground, so I'm doing something, I'm moving through space, yeah. right? And I'm gonna have to eventually have ground contact and push, right, somewhere. Mm -hmm. And so, regardless of the context, I will use my eccentric inhalation strategy to position myself because I cannot move through the concentric orientation, right? Sure. And so, so I will always be using an element of the, the inhalation strategy wherever I may be. So if I'm cutting, if I'm walking, if I'm running, it doesn't matter to get the extremity into the position. There's, and again, we're playing with gradients here, so both are happening at the same time. Right? And, but, but to get my, my foot somewhere, so I'm going to position it above the ground so when I do make ground contact, I achieve the desired result. Right, so I have to use my inhalation strategy to get there, and then as soon as I make ground contact, I have to start resisting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. And and I have to, if I don't start pushing in the opposite direction, I'm either falling through the ground. Right. So if I step in a hole that I don't see, I'm going through the ground. Okay. Um, or I'm collapsing. Right. So so I'm I'm giving way to the forces, which does happen. Right. So again, it all it, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and and, if, and and the problem arises. So so think of like a left foot cut, okay, for a second. And so so I position myself in my inhalation strategy, right. And if I make ground contact in that strategy and don't immediately start to propel, start to resist that position, and if I continue to move against the ground in that position, I now have a sprained ankle, minimum. Minimum, I broke my ankle. Sure. Right? And that's what that's how it happens. So you think about how people, when they land on a foot, so if I jump up in the air, I'm, I'm playing basketball, and this has happened to everybody that's played enough basketball. You jump up in the air, you land on somebody's foot, and then you, you end up with an inversion sprain. So why did you have an inversion sprain? Because when your foot hit the ground, you could not get your heel, the medial heel, which, which happens during... Um, the, the ground reaction, right? They'll say it's a ground reaction force. I would call it, I would say we're propelling and then we have to get the medial heel down. So you can't get your medial heel down so you can propel. And so if I stay in this inverted position and I cannot propel like I normally would, inversion sprains it. Sure. So, so that is representative of, okay, so I'm coming into a position of, of this early propulsive phase and I immediately have to move towards a legitimate propulsive component so I can start pushing, right? Right. Um, with, with, with my, the, the entire calcaneus under those situations. So sprinting's a little bit different. Right. Um, but it's still um, a propulsive phase because you have to understand where the maximum propulsion actually occurs, which is not with the calcaneus.